Hi there, my name is Saeed. I'm with PrEP 101. In this primary, we will talk about inverse trigonometric function. This is one of these topics that is discussed in the first part of Math 186 at U of T. Okay, let's get started. Okay, when it comes to trigonometric functions, and since we are talking about an inverse function, our original function needs to be one-to-one. -one. As you know, none of the trigonometric functions would are one-to-one. -one. So let me give you an example. Let's start with the graph of sine. So this is the graph of sine. And as you see here, this sine x function is not one-to-one -one because it doesn't pass the horizontal line test. If you draw a horizontal line, it will cross it at more than one point. So in order for us to be able to define sine inverse, I need to restrict the domain of this function. We do that by by restricting the domain between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Now what this does, it makes this function 1 to 1. And as you see, the domain, the, the, the range is between negative 1 to 1. That's the range of the irregular sign. Now I'm able to define inverse of this function. So I can draw the line y equals x. So that's the line y equals x. And I need to reflect this graph about the line y equals x. So if I do that, I will get something like this. So this green graph is actually the graph of sine inverse. And as you see here, the domain and range of these two functions switch. So the domain of sine x is the range of sine inverse, and uh, the range of sine x would be the domain of sine inverse. So now if I have this function, f of x equals sine inverse of x. From this graph, you can see that the domain of this function would be the range of sine, which is between negative 1 to 1. So that would be x between negative 1 to 1. So that means whatever you put inside sine inverse must be between negative 1 to 1. The range of sine inverse would be the domain of sine. In fact, the restricted domain of sine. So the range, which would be f of x, I can write it as f of x, would be between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. You can also write y is between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So similar ideas could be used to find the domain and range of other, trig other inverse trigonometric functions. In fact, we restrict the domain of the original function and from there we can define inverse trigonometric functions. So this table shows you other trigonometric functions and their inverses, as well as their domain and range. So for example, for cosine inverse, the domain, which means the input, is again between minus 1 and 1, and then the range of cosine inverse is between 0 to pi. And as you see, there are other trigonometric functions, and their domain and range are found similarly. Okay, in this example, we, we need to find the domain of sine of cosine inverse of x. Okay. So I can start by looking at this variable inside cosine inverse. And remembering that the domain of cosine inverse, from this table, the domain of cosine inverse is that x must be between negative 1 and 1. Going back to this example, I know that this x right here must be between minus 1 to 1. This is a restriction imposed by cosine inverse. So the input of cosine inverse must be between negative 1 and 1. But at the same time, we have sine outside. Because if you look at this one, you have sine of something. Now, remember that this is just a regular sine function. And I don't need to restrict the domain of that because I don't have sine inverse here. And this is like a separate function right here. So what I need here is sine of some function. Now, you, don't rem you remember the graph of sine. Sine by itself, the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. In fact, I don't have any restriction. I don't have any restriction in sine, right? It goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. So the fact that I have sine here doesn't restrict my input value. The only restriction that I have comes from cosine inverse. And that cosine inverse has a restriction that x must be between negative 1 to 1. That comes from the restriction from a 1 to 1 function that we need to define cosine inverse. So x in this case is between negative 1 to 1. And that's the only restriction that we have. 
So the domain of f is between minus 1 to 1, or you can also write it as x between minus 1 to 1. And then I also write a note here that there is no restriction from the sine function. This is why that sign doesn't affect our answer. I hope that you found this useful. If so, check out more foundations of first year calculus in the playlist. Also, make sure to join our Facebook study hub for this course. You can find the link in the description box below. Finally, I hope to see you at my prep session. I will show you how to solve midterm and exam problems and how to do that with confidence and how to ace your midterm and exam. Remember that many prep sessions for midterms are free. Visit prep101.com for more details. Thank you for watching.